Well, good morning. It's good to have you with us on this Memorial Day weekend. Uh, the um, communion table is decorated with uh, a flag and a ribbon to remember those who have died in the defense of our country. Um, if you'll go back and we'll look, uh, the uh, Revolutionary War, 6,800 men gave their lives so that we could be free from British rule. World War I, 116,516 died in defense of the country. In World War II, uh, 416,800 died in defense of the country. In the Korean War, uh, roughly 46,000. Uh, in the Vietnam War, 40,934. And to date, in the Iraq and Afghanistan War, 7,000 plus have given their lives so that we can remain free. Uh, what I would like to do, uh, remembering uh, those who have given their life for freedom, uh, is have us stand and we're going to sing the first stanza of the national anthem and then do the Pledge of Allegiance. All right. <laughs> allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all to the right now I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands one Savior crucified risen and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. Thank you, you may be seated. All right, uh, Brother Brian's going to come and uh, we're gonna have an opening hymn, 412, what a friend we have in Jesus. I just got you set down, he's gonna stand you up again. <laughs> Well, good morning and welcome. Let's do, let's stand and let's sing unto our Lord this morning, 412. What a friend we have in Jesus. <laughs>
Our God and Father in heaven, we just love you and we just thank you, Lord, for um, the rescue job that you did for our lives and saving our souls from ourselves. We thank you, Lord, for how you watch over us and how you care about every little thing in our life. We thank you, Lord, for having all the folks out here this morning to honor and worship you as you deserve to be. We'd ask, Father, that you would be with our, our missionary this morning as he brings forth the word. How challenge our hearts, Lord, with it. We do pray for them. We do pray they'd get back to Kenya in July, I believe they're headed back. And so, Lord, I pray that all things be put together for that so that they can get back there to their ministry. We'd also be asking, Lord, for our country, Lord, and in the sad state that it's in today. We ask, Lord, that you would bring revival in the hearts of folks. We also pray for salvation of many, Lord, that you'd be working in their hearts even today, convicting them, telling them that they need a Savior. Help us, Lord, with our boldness as well. Yeah. Because we need boldness uh, to speak when we need to speak. And, Lord, we need the Holy Spirit to give us the words to talk to people that they may come to the saving knowledge of Christ. We love you. We thank you for your mercy. And as, Lord, we always listen for that trumpet. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may turn your hymn, uh, hymnals over to two, 410, I believe it is. 410. Near the heart of God. 410. <laughs> Well, good morning. We are the Stephen Rains family. This is my wife, Christina, here. And uh, we have five wonderful children God has given to us. And we're just, just before we sing a song together, I would like to just briefly introduce them. So I thank the Lord for the children he's given us. And can you, young man, just tell everybody what your name is really briefly? Levi. Levi. And how old are you? Eleven. Eleven years old. And then we have? Brooklyn. Can you say it louder? Brooklyn. 
And how old are you, Brooklyn? Ten. Ten. And then? Amber Lee. Amber Lee. And how old are you? Eight. Eight years old. And then we have? Andrew. Good. Andrew. And how old are you? Seven. Seven. And then we have? Kayla. Kayla. And how old are you? Trying to get it on the fingers there. And that is three. <laughs> All right. She's our little uh, baby born in Kenya. And so we thank the Lord for her and for each of these children God has given us. In Kenya, much of our ministry and church planning and Bible college is in English, but we are also attempting to learn Swahili. And so we're going to sing the song titled, More Love to Thee, as that is really our heart's prayer to the Lord, that we would have more love for him each day. And then um, the middle verse we will sing in Swahili. Are you guys ready? Okay. More love to thee, O Christ, more love to thee. Hear thou the prayer I make on bended knee. This is my earnest plea, more love, O Christ, to thee, more Blessing that was. Nice, strong, young voices singing unto the Lord. What a blessing. Amen. All right, and you got in the back there, we got a new track, Ready to Die. You take one of those and hand it out this week. Um, also in your bulletins, you also have several missionary letters that are on front and back pages. Take a look at those, and I'm sure if you read them, then you'll know the quiz question answers if you read those this morning. So our verse this week is, Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory, with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Who can tell me that verse? I, Alice. That is correct. Mason? Paul? That's right. Okay. All right. You got it right then. All right, and of course you've seen the rains. We have the rains here this morning and their ministry sharing with us that. Uh, tonight at 6 p.m. 15, business meeting, a uh, special business meeting will be called to discuss the option of a special offering for helping with a van for a missionary work. Thursday, 6.30 is tell door-to-door -door visitation has started in the neighborhoods. Please be praying as teams go out with packets and scripture and information about First Baptist Church, our goal is to reach souls for Christ. 
June 19th, 10 a.m. is a ride for fun. If you plan on riding, please sign up in the June 22nd, 7 p.m. Lady Sriam's Missionary Meeting. The 26th, 8.30 a.m. is Men's Prayer Breakfast. June 27th, Sunday School and Morning Service. We'll have pr uh, Brother Tim Carpenter from Bearing Precious Seed Oshkosh will be sharing with us. And June 29th, Deacon's Meeting at 7. July 26th through the 30th is our Evening Vacation Bible School. And our missionary quiz this week is, in what country are the Johnsons serving? Cambodia. Cambodia is correct. What is the most recent medical work Dr. Johnson is involved with? Writing the COVID-19 protocol for Cambodia. Writing the COVID-19 protocol. protocol for Cambodia. Name another specific prayer request. their government visa to be renewed? They have a permit that they have to get to practice oh. medicine and stuff. All right, who is the director of our conversion center? Pastor Mark Reno. Pastor Mark Reno. What? Buzz, oh no. Buzz. <laughs> what, what is being sent to uh, Guatemala, Mexico, Venezuela, and from the, con what, from the conversion center? 500,000 tracks. True or false, Alpha Women's Center's mission is to save souls for Christ and save babies from abortion. True. That is true. Name two workers there with health issues we can pray for. Holly and Sue, definitely Holly and Sue. All right, so let's go to hymn number 403, Near the Cross.
to go to our offering, which is in the box, still in the back there. Put that in there. Today, in our elementary class, we have 100%, and in youth, happy birthday this week goes to Dennis Fry. Happy birthday, Dennis. And Peter Peterson, which they are up north this weekend. And happy anniversary goes to Joe and Pat Sajak. Happy anniversary. Happy. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. And Tim and Gail Miller family. Tim? Is, he right? Is that a good guess, Gail? 38. You're wrong! <laughs> well, Amen. Well, I'm glad you had 38. Amen. Amen to that. And does anyone have a spiritual birthday this week? That the, yes, Sue. Okay, great. How many? How many years? Eleven years spiritually born. Amen. Amen. Terry. 18 for Bill, 18 for Bill, okay. Same month? Same month. Amen. My birthday was last week on my 21st day, 42 years, and today also was Tom's. He's also a weekend birthday anniversary. Oh, okay, we missed that one, so happy birthday to them. Well, happy spiritually birthday to you folks. It's great to have one of those, isn't it? All right, we are going to now have our uh, choir sing, but... She's there already. So I'm going to pray, and then we're going to go to do that. Uh, let's pray. Father, we want to thank you, Lord, for the blessings that you bestow upon us. We thank you, Lord, for the jobs that we have, the house, the shelter, roofs over our head, the clothing on our back, the food in our mouths. We'd ask, Father, that you would continue to bless this ministry. We'd ask, Father, that you'd continue to strengthen our pastor, keep him physically well, keep him spiritually well, help him in his daily tasks and strengthen him in those things. We'd ask, Lord, that you'd continue to help each one of us stay on that straight and narrow path. And we love you and thank you for what you do for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
399. Let's all stand. 399. More love to thee. Tim turned down some lights. We've got an eight-minute video before the rains come and sing uh, for us. But uh, I have a granddaughter, Hannah Lee Bolder, who is graduating, and you are invited to the open house Saturday, the 5th of uh, June. That would be this week, uh, 3 o'clock till 7. You can come and go as you like. Uh, it's uh, 3550 East Fitzsimmons uh, in Sump Pump City or Oak Creek otherwise. Uh, and if you need directions, you can see me or you could see Sarah, you can see Hannah. It's not far from here. It's at the Bolander Farm. So uh, if you're coming, please sign up. Also, uh, I'd encourage a few more of you to ride. We have the second ride for fun. We just had a small handful the last time. I'd like to get six of us riding. If you'd sign up, uh, we bring some goodies and that sort of things. Uh, but um, it, it, please uh, sign up, get your bike out, test it ahead of time so I can know whether we have enough to have the ride or not. So I'm going to scoot out of the way and um, turn a couple more. I don't know whether you can turn the spots off or not. And then we're going to get uh, this doing and ask Brother Reigns to come on up and uh, sit here and Bring your wife up in a second. We are the Stephen Rains family, missionaries to Kenya, East Africa. We arrived for our first term in Kenya in the fall of 2017. 
We praise God for his physical provisions during the first few months of settling in to a new country and home. We like to tell people God dropped us into the Garden of Eden with fresh papayas, mangoes, bananas, avocados, and macadamia nuts on our property. God has truly blessed above what we could have asked or thought. In less than three months after arriving in Kenya, God blessed us with our little Kayla. She has had several health issues over the past few years for which many of you have prayed, and thankfully, God has brought her through. Over the past few years in Kenya, God has allowed us to assist the Michael Rains family in planting Lighthouse Baptist Church in the town of Fika, which is near the capital city of Nairobi. Stephen shared some of the preaching responsibility, as well as being involved in the music ministry and leading the new members class. It has been exciting to see God save souls and grow people to the point of becoming baptized, active members of this local church. But still, I didn't find the answers that I really quite wanted. It was like I wasn't in peace. It was like there was some emptiness within me. I even though that the next religion I will try would be Muslim or Buddhism, seeing that I will find answers. But I really didn't find the answers that I was looking for. It's when one Saturday I had a knock at my door, and it was this. It was a missionary, um, um, a young guy named Stephen. He was giving me a, a gospel tract and making sure and asking me if I was really 100% sure if I will go to heaven when I die. On October 16, 2019, I placed my trust in Jesus Christ to forgive me all my sins and set me free from the power of darkness and give me his free gift of eternal life. All through high school, I, I tried to, to live in a way, you know, to, to use my own efforts to be able to to be able to be a good Christian, although I wasn't a hundred percent that sure that I'll go to heaven. We started, me and my wife started building here uh, next to uh, Stephen Rains. We were looking for a church. We wanted to join a church. We both had not been going to church for some time, so but we had decided together that we really needed to find a church. Uh, and to try and seek God. God had been really talking to us at that point. And sometimes we used to lack uh, some things, maybe and like water, and call him, ask for water, and he could just bring it, you know. And most of the time when he came, he, could, he couldn't live without to speaking to us about, about, about Christ and giving us a gospel track. He was so persistent. So when we went to Lighthouse Baptist Church, we didn't know what to expect. But from experience, all the other churches we had gone to, the experience was not that good. It was all, uh, they were mostly prosperity uh, preaching churches. So we didn't, we didn't uh, get the, the true gospel there. The thing that stood out for me was, you know, saying that Christ, when he paid, he paid it all, and it wasn't because of our efforts, but on relying on him. Yeah. So that day I noticed, I, I just saw a need of giving my, my life to Christ fully and not, and not relying on my own energy, my own knowledge, and also being assured that through him, I'll go to heaven. And the message now became clear. And uh, on that day, I gave my life to Christ and I became saved. It is a beautiful thing because these days we pray together. <laughs> yeah, unlike, unlike in the past. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now I understand what baptism is. So we're looking forward to uh, getting baptized. 
and become fully members of the church. It is also a thrill to see how God has provided a national young man to continue the new members class in our absence. Jimmy was saved in 2015, is an active member of Lighthouse Baptist Church, and is currently training for full-time ministry. Another highlight of our first term in Kenya has been our involvement with Independent Baptist College of Ministry. This school was founded in 2009 with the vision to train existing and future pastors on the undergraduate and graduate levels. We praise God for the team he has given us to work with in this endeavor. Stephen has had the privilege of teaching a few classes, as well as starting a college choir and teaching on music. It has been exciting to see those who have graduated from the Bible College being thrust out into the harvest fields. There have been several churches planted and several more in the process. The Bible College has been a great tool to fulfill 2 Timothy 2.2, which says, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. Another ministry highlight has been a few youth camp opportunities. Stephen has used the skills he gained from his former camp ministry. Through this avenue, we have endeavored to reach the next generation for Christ. Though much of our ministry has been in English thus far, we are endeavoring to learn Swahili since this is the most comfortable language for the majority of Kenyans. God has provided a young lady to help some of our children in their normal studies, as well as assist us in learning Swahili. Stephen preached his first manuscript sermon in Swahili in July, which was a great milestone. Looking ahead, we would appreciate your prayers for continued progress in learning the Swahili language, continued unity among the missionary team, and wisdom and direction for future church planting opportunities. Well, we sure thank the Lord for your part in the ministry that God has allowed us to have there in Kenya. I'll say a little bit more about that video in just a moment. Uh, but at this time, my wife and I are going to sing a song titled, His Love. Our song earlier was a prayer, More Love to Thee. And this song is just a song of praise to the Lord for His great love He's shown to us. And we'd never be able to have or show love properly if it weren't for Him and His manifestation of love for us on the cross. God's love reached out to me one day on Calvary when I was lost in sin and shame. He pardoned all my sin. said love of God, so rich and free. His love is broader than any ocean, and it is deeper than any sea. i 
We certainly just praise the Lord for his amazing love, his wonderful goodness. Thank you for uh, playing the piano for us there this morning. We appreciate that and that piano ministry. Some of the places we go, we don't have a pianist that plays along with us. So that's always a real blessing to have a church, go to a church where we have uh, some good musicians. Appreciate, I really appreciate all that God is doing here. And just so thankful for each one of you and those of you watching. And I just want to praise the Lord for what he's doing here at this church. Thank you for your partnership with us in help having a vital part in the ministry there in Kenya, not only financially, but also through your prayers. I know that that is a real uh, a sacrifice in many ways, uh, to be able to give sacrificially financially, be able to give of your time and your effort to take time to pray. And as I mentioned in Sunday school this morning, just a little helpful reminder uh, for remembering to pray for us. I often tell people that when it rains, pray for the rains. Okay, so... Uh, I know it's kind of just, we all need little reminders, don't we? And things that help trigger certain things. And so next time you feel those raindrops falling, just let that be a reminder. But hey, if there's a drought, keep on praying for us, okay? We still need your prayer. Or if it's coming down in, as, as white stuff, you know, which happens for several months here in, in the wonderful state of Wisconsin, uh, we'll take your prayers then as well. It just doesn't rhyme as well to say when it precipitates pray for the rains, okay? So anyways, when it rains, pray for the rains. Stop by our table in the back there, grab a prayer card, and put that on the fridge or wherever you can to help rem remind you to pray. And feel free to sign up for the email updates. We really appreciate uh, being able to send those updates out and know that God's people are reading those and praying. And I know when you support a lot of missionaries, that can be a lot of time and effort to read through those. We try to keep them short and sweet and concise, and we try to include some pictures in those email updates as well. The, just uh, a, they say a picture is worth a thousand words, and so that way we don't. We, it saves us a couple thousand words in our email update if we just stick a couple pictures in there. And so no, we try to list out some specific prayer requests and praises as well, and keep you connected. We know that the more connected God's people are with what is happening there in the work in Kenya the more interested and connected they'll feel and more, uh, more desirous to pray. And so we certainly covet your prayers. So the video that we just showed, um, we, uh, I just wanted to mention a couple of things. You saw in that video um, some of the ministry opportunities that we have had with the Bible College, uh, with training the people of Kenya, trying to help them uh, to catch that burden and be encouraged in their study of the Word of God, in their ministry uh, toward the Lord for His work there in Kenya, to see more laborers raised up right in the country of Kenya and going out. And also just a, it's a, that Bible college provides some great opportunity for graduates to stay connected and to be encouraged. We all need that fellowship, that encouragement with other believers in Christ, other laborers in the gospel. And so it's just been a tremendous thrill to see the, the work of God um, greatly multiplying and going forth uh, through the New Testament churches that are connected with that Bible college as different um, students come and just different opportunities to interact. So we thank the Lord for that. Pray that God would continue to bless with that Bible college, that we'd continue to see more people coming and rolling in that college and also uh, be able to see more of the Kenyan uh, graduates from the Bible College being able to have more and more teaching opportunities, more and more um, administration uh, opportunities as the, the years go by and see that college really uh, just being run and going forward by the people of Kenya. And it's just been a great thrill, though, to see what God has already done in that. And then we also thank the Lord for the opportunity he's given us specifically in church planting being able to have a part right in the city of Thika, T-H-I-K-A. You saw some people there that the Lord allowed us to meet just in our day-to-day -day witnessing opportunities. There were many more we could have put on there, many other testimonies, but we just picked a couple. The first young man that you saw on the video there, his name was Peter. And in fact, uh, this morning, um, shortly after I woke up, you know, they had already finished their morning service over there. They're about eight hours ahead of us there in Kenya, East Africa, 
and uh, I saw a message from Peter this morning, and just a blessing to see this young man um, wasn't going to church anywhere. As he mentioned in the video, he was, if he wasn't getting, going to get, if he didn't find the answers he was looking for in Christianity, and he didn't even really know where to look for that, he was actually, when I met him, he was reading some books that gave instructions on how you can have communication with the angel world. And so he was telling me about very, describing amazing details, very specific details of conversations he had been having with Lucifer and with Michael the Archangel and Gabriel and, you know, very unconnected with the Bible. And, but I could tell that this young man was searching and I remember coming home on, after visiting Peter and kind of updating my wife. I'd usually take one or two of my kids with me because he had a niece and nephew there and that worked out really well for the kids to play together and kind of freed him up to be able to just sit and talk and do Bible study. And, and uh, boy, he had a lot of questions about things that I had never really had a discussion with uh, anyone before. And, uh, but I could tell he was searching and because uh, many times I'd go home and just think, am I wasting my time? You know, I just spent two hours there talking about things. And is this young man really going to get saved? You know, is he really gonna, going to uh, believe the truth and turn to Christ and live for God? But I ju the Lord just kept prompting me, go back. He's searching. He's looking for answers. And so take time and just listen to what he has to say and let him talk. But then... Uh, give him some challenging things to think about from the Bible and challenge him to read his Bible. And we were able to go through an evangelistic Bible study very slowly because he had so many questions and other thoughts. And so, but I could just tell he was searching and he kept going back there week after week. And finally, we saw him turn to Jesus Christ for salvation, as you could see uh, as he gave the testimony there. One really neat thing was that Sunday morning, uh, the first Sunday morning after he got saved was one of the first Sundays he came to church. And without anybody prompting him, he stood right up during a testimony time and told the church, told the people there, how he had put his trust in Christ for salvation that week. And it was just a thrill to see the Lord bring him from a lot of confusion and darkness into clear understanding of his sin and the condemnation, who Jesus Christ is, and uh, how he had died and risen for him and was offering that free gift of eternal life for him to receive by faith. And he put his trust in Christ. It was just a miracle. So I, I give some of those details. There's so much more, so many other people we could talk about, but I just want you to realize some specific uh, details and feel that connection with some of these people that um, you have been praying for. And maybe it, it kind of just seems like a name on a paper on an email update, you know? And, but really, there are um, souls behind those names in whom God is ready to save. The fields are white unto harvest. And the other um, couple that you saw there was Tony and Laura. When we moved into the house that we live in over there, uh, just outside of Thika, uh, where we have Lighthouse Baptist Church getting started, um, there was an empty plot to the east side of us. Just kind of a lot of weeds. Sometimes people would plant a crop in there. We're right on a river there. And... Um, one day, some workers came and started clearing the area, clearing the property, and building a house. And so we went over there and met some of them. And eventually, we met Tony and Laura, and we were able to reach out to them. We just thought, hey, maybe these people are looking for a church. And sure enough, they hadn't really been going to church anywhere. Laura grew up as a Seventh-day Adventist and, so had a, and didn't really go to church a whole lot, but in that home and community, a lot of people were uh, Seventh-day Adventists kind of out by Lake Victoria there in Kenya. But she had moved to the area, and, and uh, Tony had grown up in that community, uh, but grew up going to a Pentecostal church and had just quit going to church as a teenager, just didn't really feel the need for it. And uh, so anyways, we met them. We were able to, as I mentioned, you know, help them with some things. They didn't have water hooked up or electricity at their house. And so we were able to help them out with um, getting water uh, for drinking uh, in the first uh, few weeks they were there or getting, getting the house ready and also electricity. That was kind of interesting. I told them they could plug in at the outlets at our house if they needed. So 
they, uh, we have a cement wall. It's very common to have a cement wall around your property there with razor wire or electric fencing on top of it. So I told them they could run the wire over the wall. So I'm waiting for it, and here comes these two um, wires, you know, just like you run in through the piping, through the conduit, you know, in a building. And I just thought, okay, you know, I don't know, not quite sure how to plug that one in, but they came over and uh, an electrician, you know, clipped the insulation off the ends of the wires and stuck them into my outlet. And I heard a saw running over on the other side of the wall, so I figured that must work for them. You know, you don't just typically get those kind of cords when you go to uh, Menards or Home Depot for your electric, um, your uh, extension cords, you know. And I just wasn't quite used to that. But anyways, there were no sparks or anything. And, and it ended up being something that God really used. That would, you know, just the simple things, the electricity, the water. We'd take some bananas over there, you know, and just try to reach out to them, befriend them, and invited them to come to church, gave them go the gospel and gospel tracts. And, and the Lord really used that to work in their hearts and realize, wow, these people do really love us. And they just had never really experienced that before. Um, especially from foreigners in the country. And so anyways, we just praise God for how he works and the opportunities that he brings. And we're looking forward to more. We're, like I said, we're planning to go back to Kenya at the end of July and uh, jump back in the, the work over there. We're praying about a couple of other um, possible church plant ministry opportunities in this next term and just really seeking the Lord to make that clear to us when we get back there. And so we would really covet your prayers for that, planning to uh, do some a little bit more uh, intensive Swahili studies. We've been continuing that while we're here in the States a little bit each day, uh, but just looking forward to getting back there and jumping into the college ministry and church planting um, opportunities there and just seeing what God will do. So thank you again for your part. And I just encourage you, maybe you don't really have a regular daily or weekly practice of you know, making time to pray for missionaries, the different missionaries supported by this church. I encourage you to do that. When we get to heaven as Christians one day, I think we're going to look back and wish we had spent a lot more of our time, a lot less time doing, you know, the leisure things of life and more time um, having invested it for that which really counts for eternity. And uh, so anyways, it's not, you're not going to be challenged through that, through the commercials on TV and the billboards around the cities. Um, but because uh, that's not the, the, the common broad way of life, all right? With God calls us to the narrow way and to live a life of faith and to follow his leading. And so I just really trust your, your heart is encouraged in prayer and giving toward missions and just seek, seeking the Lord, whatever he'd want you to do. Maybe God would even be calling you to a foreign field. You've been sensing God pricking your heart in that way. And just be ready uh, to go do, ready to do whatever God wants you to do. I guarantee God's way is the best way. And whatever that is, crossing the street or crossing the ocean to give the gospel and uh, just being an active part of a New Testament church like this one right here, being a saved, baptized, active member of this church. This is one of the greatest things going on in all of this community around here in the sight of God and for what counts for eternity. So I trust that you're, you're here, you're an active, uh, saved, baptized member of this local church and letting God work in your life through this wonderful um, work of God. Well, let's take our Bibles this morning and turn to the book of Judges. The book of Judges, I know that's not a typical missions uh, book that we would, we would typically go to for a missions theme, but there is a wonderful truth here found in Judges chapter 6 and 7 that the Lord just really has impressed on my heart and um, shown some wonderful truth in, in these two chapters that uh, can apply to our lives in regards to missions. And you'll see how that ties in. But I'd like us to look here in Judges chapter 6 this morning. You know, a lot of times we feel really insignificant. I don't know about you, but in our world today, you know, we hit, we encountered some major curveballs in life in 2020, didn't we? And they seem to be coming uh, pretty steadily still, and uh, just some major adjustment for many people in this country and around the world. And, you know, there's, it's very natural for us to 
react to these things in fear and just kind of back into a corner and feel like, whoa, you know, all I can really do is just kind of hold on for dear life. You know, I don't know, oh man, you know, as you think about, uh, you know, actually being used of God to advance the gospel in 2021 and see churches growing and flourishing, you know, seeing the work of God go forward, see this nation experience a revival. So many people think, oh, you know, if I can just survive until the rapture, and boy, we kind of get our eyes off of the fact that, hey, there are millions of people around this world that if they were to die right now, they would go to hell. They're not ready for the Lord's return. They're not ready to die. And so we, God, God knows the future. He knew what was coming in 2020, and he's got it all planned out. And let me tell you, throughout, you read this book from cover to cover, and I trust that you have that goal to read through the Bible on a regular basis. I know it's a big book, there's a lot there, but have a plan to read through it every two years or every one year or more, whatever um, you could do and seek the Lord with that. But boy, when you read this book, you realize there were many times throughout the ages where God's people felt overwhelmed, felt discouraged, felt like, you know, wow, God has forsaken us. What can we do? Is God really still powerful? Is he, where is he? And that's exactly what we find here in Judges chapter 6 with the example of Gideon. He felt very small, very insignificant, very helpless. And I think many Christians around the world are probably tempted to feel that way these days. And I would love for us here today to be greatly encouraged as we kind of zoom out of life that we're in, push all the things out of your mind, let God just show you, remind you of the big picture of life and what God is able to do. He is still on the throne and he is more than ready. The fields are still white unto harvest and he's ready to use us in his work. We need to take him at his word and remember that God is the key factor. It's not about me and my religious performance and my amazing talents and just, you know, no, we've got to surrender all of that to the Lord and say, God, it is 100% you that empowers me to live the Christian life and to be used of God. You don't, you know, that we, in our human thinking, we try to get thinking, oh, well, you know, if I could just achieve this in life, in my Christian life, then I'd be more capable to be used of God. And, you know, the devil's always going to keep something in front of us to get us to think we've got to do this or do that. Or if I only had that ability or that training, then I could really be used of God. And, you know, the list of excuses can go on and on. And Gideon did that same thing here. Look in Judges chapter 6, verse 11. Judges chapter 6, verse 11, and notice this wonderful truth this morning that little is much when God is in it. Verse 11, And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak which was in Ophrah that pertained unto Joash the Abiezrite. And his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, the Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Kind of interesting how he called him a mighty man of valor. And here he is hiding from the Midianites. He's a child of God, but boy, he's living in fear. Down in the wine press, hiding, threshing the wheat, just trying to survive. Verse 13, and Gideon said unto him, and I could just hear the quiver in his voice here, Oh, my Lord. If the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites." Have not I commanded thee? And he said unto him, O oh, my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. Let's pray. Lord, we look to you 
to work in our hearts during this time. God, use your word, we pray. Help us to have soft, tender hearts, not to be hard, not to allow ourselves to be distracted by other thoughts, but to focus on you and what you have for us in your living word this morning. Thank you, God, for your, the work of your Holy Spirit here this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Notice some truths, simple truths here from this example of Gideon. Little is much when God is in it. Notice, first of all, little is much when we see ourselves as totally incapable. Here's Gideon. He was a believer. He was, you know, looking forward to the coming Messiah who would one day come and set them free. He had put his trust in that coming Messiah for salvation. So salvation has always been by faith in Jesus Christ, graciously offered by God, received by faith. For by grace are you saved through faith. So Gideon here, a child of God, but yet had caved in to the fear that was overwhelming the Israelites that day. The Midianites were surrounding them. Boy, these people had forgotten who God was. Gideon saw himself as very incapable of being used of God. I mean, I'm sure it, he was shocked when this angel appeared unto him and said, you know, called him a mighty man of valor and told him, go and destroy the Midianites as one man. You know, <laughs> could you imagine that? You know, what if God told you something like that in 2021? I mean, it would just be, you'd really, you know, humanly speaking, there's just no way possible. And then Gideon gave a couple of excuses here. You know, he, he's questioning, if the Lord be with us, verse 13, why is all this befallen us? You know, where are the miracles our fathers told us of? We heard about that Red Sea parting. We've heard about the great God, but where is he? The enemies of God have surrounded us. They are overwhelming us. We are in fear and trembling. Almost kind of sounds like 2020 and 21, doesn't it? You know, the Christians are like, oh, where is God? Has he forsaken us? Does he remember we're still here? Yes. He knows exactly what is going on. And he is waiting for us to stop giving excuses for why we can't follow his commands in 2021. But look here in verse 13, you know, uh, the end of that verse there. But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hand of the Midianites. And then um, Gideon also in verse 15 says, O oh, my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. You know, he's just giving these excuses. We, we don't see the hand of God anywhere. My family and the community, we're one of the poorest families. Me, personally, I'm one of the least of the people in, this, in our family. God, how can you use me? Wow. Wow. That seems kind of encouraging to me. Do any of you ever feel t totally incapable of God doing anything great in and through you in this world, in this community? We all feel that at times. We all feel helpless and needy. Little is much when we see ourselves as totally incapable. You know what? That is a good thing. If we're, if we're feeling like we're so confident in ourselves and, boy, God can really use me, we're just immediately shutting down the, the avenue through which God could work. God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. And God saw Gideon was humble, feeling totally incapable, and God thought, okay, there's a child of God, and I believe that if I give him the, these commands, I tell him what to do, I can see in his heart that he will respond, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give him something special to do here. But Gideon, of course, saw himself as very incapable. Notice, secondly, little is much when we are willing to take God at his word. When we are willing to take God at his word. Now, that's what Gideon had to do here. Okay, he threw out all the excuses. We're totally surrounded by the Midianites. God has forsaken us. All these excuses. But God reminded him of some powerful reality. Look at verse 14. The Lord said, uh, and the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might. Wow, what, is, what might is he talking about? 
and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Here it is. Have not I sent thee? And then in verse 16, And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. What was the key factor here? The word of the Lord. I have spoken, God says. I am commanding you. I am telling you to do this. And therefore, it's going to happen if you obey. If you respond to my word, I will do this. Does God's word ever fail? Never. We fail, don't we? We fail to respond and say, Oh Lord, you have said this. You have given me this great commission to go into all the world and give the gospel to every creature. You've commanded me to teach all nations. And what is the wonderful promise at the end of the Great Commission? I'm sure you've read it before. In Matthew chapter 28, Jesus concludes the command with a very similar command and promise that he gave to Gideon. He says, and lo, I am with you always even unto the end of the world. Wow, same promise. I'm with you. Go and do it. And remember, I am with you. God, God who can speak one word and create the world. He can speak a word and create billions of suns in this galaxy. What power. He is with me. He is the one that enables me to go across the street to give the gospel. I feel so incapable many times. I feel so weak and helpless. But little is much when we see ourselves as totally incapable. Little is much when we are willing to take God at his word. And praise God, Gideon was willing to do that. He felt totally helpless. But he, were, he, he listened to that phrase, I am with you. I am with you. Notice thirdly, little as much when we are more concerned about what God thinks than what people think. Boy, that's a big one for us. And Gideon uh, proved that in his life, he had to overcome these feelings of feeling totally incapable. He had to overcome the feelings and the thoughts and the fear of what will happen when I do what God tells me to do? One of the first things God told him to do was go and knock down the altar of Baal that his father owned and to cut down the grove of trees that surrounded that place of worship to Baal. Basically expose, you know, get clean out and expose the wickedness that's going on. Wow. You know, we ought to be praying you might feel like, oh, my little prayers can't do much for this country. Oh, we're so far gone. It's just going to get worse and worse. Well, you know what? The rapture has not happened yet. And there have been times throughout the ages where people feel like, wow, this, we must be at the end of the world. I mean, the rapture, even back in the early New Testament church, they thought that. The rapture is going to be happening really soon. You know, well, that ought to drive us to urgency. Has the rapture happened yet? No, it hasn't. Let's keep praying and believing God to transform this community. Let's keep praying and believing God to transform this country, to stir up Christians, to take the little me that feels so helpless and overwhelmed and see God do great and mighty things. See God encourage my heart to give the gospel. Look at verse 25 here. And notice how... Um, Little is much when we are more concerned about what God thinks than what people think. Verse 25, And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Take thy father's young bullock, and even the second bullock of seven years old, and throw down the altar of Baal that thy father hath, and cut down the grove that is by it, and build an altar unto the Lord thy God upon the top of this rock in the ordered place, and take the second bullock, and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood of the grove, which thou shalt cut down. Then Gideon took ten men of his servants, and did as the Lord had said unto him. Wow, fearful, quivering Gideon, hiding down in the wine press. But now he's responding to the word of the Lord. Praise God. 
And so it was because he feared his father's household and the men of the city that he could not do it by day, that he did it by night. And when the men of the city arose early in the morning, behold, the altar of Baal was cast down and the grove was cut down that was by it. And the second bullock was offered upon the altar that was built. So look at that. Here, Gideon obeyed the commands of the Lord. And he remembered, God is with me. Don't be afraid of what people will think because God is with me. That ought to be a great encouragement to us in 2021. Man, I've trusted Christ as my Savior. I have God, the Holy Spirit, dwelling inside of me. The indwelling Holy Spirit living in me to empower me as a teenager, as an adult, to not be afraid of what people will think and just do what God wants me to do. Just keep spreading the gospel, trusting God to give me joy in the midst of trials, God's strength in the midst of difficult circumstances. Little is much when we are more concerned about what God thinks than what people think. Don't be afraid of what people think. Notice next of all, little is much when we are not relying on human strength and numbers. Look in chapter 7, we're going to jump here. Uh, to chapter 7 and verse 1. Now Gideon is ready to go and uh, defeat the Midianites like God had told him to. And of course, these Midianites, God, God is merciful. He had given them plenty of opportunity to turn to God. Okay? He doesn't, God does not delight. He, he's not willing that any should perish. Okay? But that all should come to repentance. They had had plenty of opportunity, but here now God is ready to manifest his power in this particular way. Chapter 7, verse 1, Then Jerubal, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him rose up early and pitched beside the well of Herod, so that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Morah in the valley. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand hath saved me. Now, therefore, go to, proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And there returned of the people twenty and two thousand, and there remained ten thousand. Okay, so about thirty-two thousand people altogether here in Gideon's army. Twenty-two thousand depart. Wow, that's a lot. God didn't want them thinking, hey, we had so many people, we were able to do this great thing. Same thing with the commands God gives us today. God doesn't want you thinking, hey, you know, and there's, get all the Bible training you can get, get whatever, you know, whatever tools you can do, better equip yourself to give the gospel and be equipped and prepared. But don't wait until a certain point to get out there and be giving the gospel to your neighbors, your coworkers. God says to go into all the world. Give the gospel. Depend upon God. We don't have to wait until America uh, has a majority of Christians to really believe that God can do something great in this country to turn people to the Lord. We don't have to wait for a majority. We, little is much when we are not relying on human strength and numbers. Then you see in verses 4 through 7, God says, you know what? I think that army is still too big. And he trims it from 10, okay, 22,000 down to, or 32,000 down to 10,000, and then 10,000 down to 300. <laughs> and they're going against thousands of Midianites. Well trained, equipped soldiers. 300 compared to thousands. I mean, that's hard for us to really comprehend that. That is a huge trim down. Don't think that. God has to have a huge population in Oak Creek before this, this community can turn to Christ. Little is much when God is in it. Don't, think, don't let the devil convince you that your private prayer life just isn't really going to make much difference for God. Little is much when God is in it. When we are just saying, God, this is in your word, I'm going to follow it. Lord, your plan for this age is the New Testament church. Lord, I'm going to be an active part of it. Show me what you want me to do. 
Lord, you want every single Christian to be a missionary wherever you have them in the world? Yes, Lord, I will do that. I will help make disciples right here at First Baptist Church of Oak Creek. I, I'll be used of you to help build up other... I t Lord, you know my past, you know my sin, you know whatever. Commit it all to the Lord and let God, trust God to use you. You don't have to be Mr. Personality or Mrs. Wonderful to be used of God. Nope, we're all sinners. And if you've trusted Christ as your Savior, then you are a sinner saved by grace, and God is ready and able to use you in his work. Don't rely on human strength and numbers. Notice, last of all, that little is much when we don't look to conventional methods to do God's work. Just take him at his word. Take him at his word. In chapter 7, verses 19 through 21, we see some unusual uh, battle uh, strategies that God commanded Gideon to use in fighting the Midianites. And I am sure God didn't send them with the typical sword. You know, he could have provided a multitude of horses and chariots and all kinds of artillery, you know, of that day to go against the Midianites. He could have provided that. God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. You know, the, everything is his. But God wanted Gideon to have a small little army, and he gave him some very unusual um, battle instruments to use. Look at verse 19. So Gideon and the hundred men that were with him came unto the outside of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch. And they had but newly set the watch, and they blew the trumpets and break the pitchers that were in their hands. And the three companies blew the trumpets and break the pitchers and held the lamps in their left hands and the trumpets in their right hands to blow with all. Okay, so they've got pitchers that, you know, could break and shatter easily and make a loud cracking, crashing sound. And they've got trumpets to blow. And they cried, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And they stood every man in his place round about the camp. And all the host of the Midianites ran and cried and fled. Wouldn't you love to see that sight? Here's the little 300 men. Little is much when God is in it. When we are willing to get our eyes off of the circumstances, oh, the devil loves to get our attention. Oh, man, look at what's happening in our world today. The evil just are overwhelming us. Oh, if I can just survive until heaven. No, God wants you advancing the cause of Christ in 2021. He doesn't want you being a Christian hermit and just crawling into a cave and, you know, just eating food, just threshing your wheat in the wine press and hiding from the enemies and just hold. No, God wants, if you're saved, God wants you out there on the front lines for God. Why? Because your eyes are on the almighty God who created all things, the Savior who came and conquered sin and death and rose from the grave. And your confidence and your eyes are on him in the command that he gives to go, give the gospel everywhere you go. I will be with you, not just the missionaries, not just your pastor. That command was given to every single person. Christian from that period till 2021, till today, and on until the return of Christ. Where are your eyes today? Are your eyes focused on the amazing, great, almighty, eternal God who lives inside of you and says, I am with you? I'm with you. Or are your eyes focused on, oh, if you only knew about this problem right now, and oh, my finances over here, and oh, this relationship problem. Oh, if you only knew my neighbors, you would realize, well, there's no way I could give them the gospel. If you only knew my coworkers, my family members, oh, and we can sit and give excuses, like Gideon did. Or we can say, hey, wow, look at God. Look at how great he is. He can do anything. Yes, God, if you want me to do that, okay. Wow, it seems humanly impossible. I don't know how it's going to happen, but God, you said to do it, I'll trust you. 
and I'll get out there and follow you. Yes, Lord, you are with me. Let's take that same wonderful promise that we find in Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20, to go, go across the street, be ready to go across the ocean if the Lord leads. But remember the promise, I am with you, the creator of the billions of stars in our galaxy, the creator of the billions of people on this earth, amazing, intelligent design, created in the image of God. God is with us. Are you willing to trust him or are you going to keep your focus on all the little things and how, oh, I'm so helpless. Oh, I can't do this. Are you in fear and trembling today? How are you going to go through the week this week? In fear and trembling over circumstances or by faith with your eyes fixed upon the almighty everlasting God who is ready to use little you and little me? Let's about go to him in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for this example of Gideon and how, Lord, even though um, it wasn't related specifically to the Great Commission, Lord, we know that uh, you gave Gideon commands and the great assuring promise was, I am with you. You've given us commands in 2021 to be vibrant witnesses for you, relying upon you, though, to do it relying upon you for your great power to build up First Baptist Church of Oak Creek, relying upon your power to help enable someone here today maybe who needs to take that step to believe in Jesus Christ for, for eternal forgiveness of sins and everlasting life in heaven and right here on earth with Christ, a relationship with God. Someone here today maybe who needs to take that step to say, yes, Lord, you want me to be baptized and be a public, uh, have public identification with Jesus Christ. Lord, I'll do it. Lord, strengthen your people here today and work mightily to meet the needs of our hearts. Help every one of us here today to walk out of those doors 100% sure that we have sins forgiven and a home in heaven when we die based on you, your word, your promise to us. And Lord, help those of us who are saved to walk out of the doors here today encouraged and those watching, Lord, to go from here um, totally encouraged that you are in full control. You are far greater than any circumstances of this life on earth. Lord, help us to have our eyes on you and to remember your wonderful promise, I am with you, and that little is much when God is in it. Thank you, God, for what you will do today among us as your people. We commit it all to you, we praise you, and thank you for the great things that you will do in the days and hours ahead. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, ready to die. You can pick one of those up, two, three, four, five. Hand it out to somebody this week. Witness to your neighbor. Come out, visitation Thursday, pray for good weather. But if you're not sure that uh, Jesus Christ is your Savior, I'll be down here at the front, or you can see me on the way out. Uh, I'll answer all your questions and show you with an open Bible how you can come to know Jesus Christ as personal Savior. But when you walk out of this place, remember, um, you're a witness. The thing is, is whether you're a good one or a bad one. So be a good one for the Lord Jesus Christ. Brian. All right, let's take our hymnals to 407. Let's stand beneath the cross of Jesus, 407.